Hello and welcome to my channel, J Colors. My name is Jody, and I'm thrilled to have you here today to celebrate something fun, um, which is Shark Week. So from July 23rd to the 30th uh, is this year's Shark Week, and we are going to be doing a double page from Fragile World, Kirby Roseanne's book, and it is obviously going to be this double page spread of shark. I am going to use watercolor mediums on it because it is also July World Watercolor Month. I have already pre-prepared this page with Daniel Smith watercolor ground and there are a few uh, extra little ridges on here I can feel with my fingers. So I'm going to take a nail buff um, which is very very fine grit. Uh, I wouldn't even call it sandpaper but it's along that line and I'm just going to lightly smooth out the ridges by running this over the page and I've had it held down with a couple of uh, binder clips which I can take off now and then I'm going to take a chamois and I'm just going to rub or wipe the um, dust off so I don't want to sand it down too much I just run run over it basically once with the nail buff and then sand it off. And that makes the page much smoother and we're ready to do some watercolor. So for the double page spread, I wanted to uh, use a color palette, but I couldn't actually decide on just one. So there are two that are very close, but they also have I think that they complement each other. Uh, one is 51. These are both from Sarah Renee's Color Cube number no. one. So this is uh, 51, which includes turquoise, teal, dark teal, charcoal, and gray. So that will cover off uh, the shark and uh, the water. And then I also picked 55. So both of these are from the ocean category. And this one is dark blue, light blue, Bondi blue, steel blue, and dark blue again. So uh, I think that between the both of these, uh, we'll have all the colors that we kind of need. And I wanted to pick those out. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do for, there are like thousands of baby fishes or little fishes on these pages. So um, that kind of stumps me. So what I'm going to do though is I'm going to do the background first this time, which is something that I don't always do. Quite often I'll do the background last. But since there is so much uh, to do, I think I will do the background first. So for areas like the very, very tiny fishes and the uh, bubbles that I want to retain the weight of the paper, I'm going to actually use some Peebles drawing gum. It is a liquid um, masking fluid and that will preserve the weight of the paper. So I'll do that right now. I am using my glass dip pen to help me do these small, fill in the small circles with the uh, drawing gum instead of a uh, paintbrush. Okay, so I'm done putting the uh, dots on it. So I used the my glass dip pen and I dipped it into the drawing gum and and. Uh, it's a little bit thicker than ink, so it doesn't flow great, um, but it did work better than a paintbrush. So um, I thought I would give it a try, and uh, yeah. So now we will just wait for the dots to dry, and then I will pull out some Neo Color 2s, I think, and we'll start on that. Okay, I'm back after pulling out a few water-soluble mediums. I have... Uh, reviewing the palette. I have selected some colors that go really well with palette number uh, 55. Five. So that's this one for the main part of the water. And I have selected, I've got a white Neo Color 2, a turquoise blue 171, a cobalt blue 160, and a Prussian blue 159. So I've done some swatching here and those are the colors. I also swatched out black, so if I do want to use black, I can. 
So for the background, I'm going to start with a palette. I've put a my rough and medium mat on top of it. Uh, it's from my Tim Holtz uh, mat, and I just laid it on top of my palette. I'm going to scribble directly onto the mat, uh, activate the Neo Color 2, and then bring it onto the paper. That way, I'm not, um, you know, coloring first and then moving it onto the paper. I do have the dried spots on here of the, where the water droplets are and I am going to use a since it's such a large background I'm actually going to use a number eight round so that I can uh, cover as much as quickly as possible so I'm just going to move my Neo colors I have the 40 set of uh, Karen Dash Neo color 2 and I've just got a blotting cloth beside it I've got a spray bottle and I've also got some uh, water, both clean and dirty. I'll show you where, how I'm going to, going to do uh, the lighter colors first. So I'm gonna, so the lighter color is 171, that's the turquoise blue. And I'm just going to scribble a bunch onto the palette here, activate it. Okay, and then I'm going to take a wet paintbrush and finish activating it. Okay, and then I'm going to start painting. And I'm going to keep the, the areas light with closest to the shark. So Kind of where I think that the water would be light. And so I will speed the camera up now and you can watch the time lapse. Okay, I've reserved an area of the lightest color. I'm now going to take the next color, which is the cobalt blue, and I'm going to do the same. I'll just blend a little bit of white into it. Just so there's a bit of a, more of a transition color. And now I'm going to go in and paint basically and run into the other color and I'll do some more blending and in fact I'll grab a water brush and I'll blend with the water brush Okay, I'll continue doing that for the rest of the page. And then on the darkest areas near the um, outside, I will leave those uh, for the darker blue, but I will continue on with this color blue for quite a while. Here's how we're doing after the first coat of the lightest and then the slightly darker color. Now I'm finishing off this section over here and I will continue uh, to blend. I'll cover the whole page basically except for the very corners uh, and then I'll come in with a darker blue and we will let this dry and then I will come back and do a second coat to deepen up the uh, colors. Basically we're just 
reserving uh, color areas right now. Okay, everything is pretty much covered except for the uh, corners. So I'm going to uh, bring in the darkest blue, which is the Prussian blue. And I'm actually just going to mix it right onto the leftover Okay, this is how it's looking after the first coat and we will leave this dry and then we will come back and do a, another coat before we continue on with the shark. The shark is going to be uh, black, navy blue and white. Okay, we're back and I have done a second coat on some of the areas. This is how it's looking. And I think I'm going to leave it for now and I will uh, do some of the uh, sharks. So those are the main part of the picture. And uh, I'm going to be using the Caran uh Black, which is uh, 009. And I'm actually going to color um, onto the palette that still has a bunch of blue on it. So the, I'm going to mix black and blue together to give it a bit of uh, more color because I think that um, that would look pretty cool. too much blue in there still so I think I'm gonna have to darken that up a bit This double page is hard to get uh, filmed into one. Let me try and move the camera a bit. Close your eyes. Okay, hopefully you can see more of the page that way. Okay, I definitely want the white to show up as bright white as possible, so I'm going to use the white directly onto the page and I'm going to color it.
picking up some of the blue that was there before. Okay, we're going to let this side of the page dry for a bit. Um, I will need to come over with the second coat for sure because it's not as dark as it uh, needs to be. So what I'm going to do on this side is a little less blue and more black and I'll see which uh, side I like best. Okay, so now I just have black. up on its edge a bit but uh, it will straighten out with a heavy book later. Okay, this is a look at how it is after the first coat. It's still wet on the sharks. We will we'll let that dry and then we will do an additional uh, layer of black. And then we will do this seal. Welcome back to what I am going to term as the school of fish portion of the program. I have got uh, some Prima marketing shimmering lights. Uh, watercolors. So I've pulled out Twinkle and Antique and I have got some beads of water on both of them uh, just prepping them for use. I also have some Fine Tech Silver that I'm also going to put some water on and I will put that in a separate dish as well. And we're going to use those three colors to paint all of the school of fish that is everywhere. I've also gone and grabbed some smaller paint brushes. I have a four and a five slash zero. So just some tiny paint brushes. One's a Holbein and one's an artist loft. So just whatever brushes I have on hand, I've got some clean water and we're just gonna give the paint a minute to soak in. And then we will uh, start painting the scads of fish that are on this page. And I'm not going to paint them all every single fish the same color, um, but I will go and um, paint a variety of fish around there. I'm doing silver because the I'm hoping that they will uh, shine a little bit in the light when you move the page. So let's just get painting. Okay, that was a long and tedious process, but I have uh, gotten all of the fish done and I used three, the three different shades of silver and antique so that they'll all be a little bit different, but still all shiny. 
and it'll be slightly translucent um, or transparent I should say so you'll still see the black uh, squiggly outlines on the actual fish and the and the detail of the fish when you're looking up close but it should produce some shine I still have to do a second coat on paint on the sharks themselves but while I'm waiting for the fish to dry I think I'm going to concentrate here on the seal so I'll zoom you in a little bit for the seal okay while we wait for the multitude of school of fish to dry I pulled out the umber uh, 049 color and I'm going to do the seal or the sea lion whichever you want to call him While we wait for these uh, seal to be dry, uh, which will take another coat for sure, I have done a little bit more black. So I'm coming in with the uh, black Neo Color 2009 and doing another layer on top, making sure not to get any on the white, of course. And then I'm going to bring the black down onto here and uh, fading into the blue area so I will be mixing so I'll, I'll keep it black till about here and then I'll start mixing in the blue so we're just adding more color and I think next time I should probably try doing first a layer of ink tents and then coming in with Neo color too because that um, might give me better coverage right away so that's something that I'll give a try. So when you're adding a layer on top of a layer of watercolor, uh, you just need to put it down. You try not to scrub too much or anything because you will end up lifting the layer from earlier up. And that's the difference with ink tents that wouldn't happen, but um, with watercolors, it will. So. Okay, and when I want to use the blue as well, I'm just going to scribble right on top and then I'm going to take a spray bottle and reactivate both that way. And then I'll have the blue and the black combined. Okay, for shark number two, we're going to come in again with some more black and a little bit of blue left over on the palette. And we're going to do a second coat. Okay, I think I am done with the painting portion of this. I'll move it in the light a little bit. So we've got the shark here, we've got the shark here, we've got the sea lion there, a thousand fish. 
Okay, we're back and I am done painting. I think I'm going to switch now to my set of polychromos and I'm going to do some shading and some final uh, deepening of colors uh, with colored pencil now. So I'm going to work first on the sea otter and uh, darken up a bit of shading and for him. I'm using a variety of warm grays and we're just gonna make sure that he looks like he should and then I've got some uh, dark blue and Chinese white uh, so basically using these colors here I've gone and pulled out a variety of uh, polychromos pencils that will work. Okay, using two polychrome pencils, uh, Dark Indigo 157 and Black 199, I have gone over the shark, and uh, mostly in the indigo, and then a little bit uh, black just along the edges to deepen it up. I then used Chinese White and brightened up a few of the uh, areas where it's supposed to be white. And now I am going to come in with a paintbrush and a little bit of Dragonfly Glaze. And I'm going to just put the glaze on the top. Move the page and see if you can see that. So I'm just on some of the dark areas. Okay, I will do the same over here to this shark. Okay, so I'm going to start with the two pencils first, the black and the indigo.
Now that the sharks are both uh, touched up with pencil and then added the glaze, dragonfly glaze on top, I'm going to now go around to all of the areas where there's a lot of fish and using uh, some blue and turquoise pencils, I'm just uh, cleaning up to make sure that the um, fish have a uh, pencil crayon or a color right up to them uh, because there are so many fish just uh, blending in the color of the ocean because there's little areas in between the fish that uh, may not have enough color or the color has been washed out a bit. So this is going to take a while. Let me zoom it, bring it up a little bit. So this is the area I'm working on. So just making sure that all of the fish have uh, blue right up to the actual fish and there isn't any white to the paper showing through. So I'll keep doing that. Uh, and then we will come back and we will do the bubbles. I have taken off the masking fluid uh, by just rubbing with the, uh, my finger and also a small eraser. So I used the mono eraser to take off the masking fluid where it had dried and I will come in with, come in with the bleed proof white and uh, dot that on. Okay, we're back for the final touches and that is I'm bringing in a micron pen and I'm using a plastic nib so that it uh, writes a little bit easier over top of the watercolor. And I am going to be adding back in uh, the eyes and sometimes a little bit of an outline of the fish if they've been overwritten too much. So, as you can see, some of the fish, uh, you can't really see their eyes anymore. So I've just, see like this one here, I'll just draw that back in. And I'll do that over all of them that uh, need it. And then we're going to call this done. I did put a little bit of glaze uh, glossy accents on the eye itself and you can see the uh, dragonfly glaze blue shimmer when I move the page and the shimmer of the fish. So I could keep adding more layers uh, to the sea, the different blues, but I think it actually looks okay the way it is. So I'm going to call this page done as soon as I finished off. Uh, I did end up using a small paintbrush uh, with the Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White to do the uh, little air bubbles. So I also may go in and outline a couple of the ones that look like they need a little bit of help with definition. Overall, I think I'm happy with the page. Thank you for joining me. I hope you have a great uh, July. I hope you're doing something fun and creative. And until next video, have a colorful and creative week. Happy Shark Week, everyone. Bye-bye.